So Threadripper has a couple modes I think may have some of you confused. Well, I'm here to unconfuse you, so stay tuned. Welcome back to GamerMeld. For those who haven't noticed, the Threadripper veil has been lifted and reviews for AMD's new HEDT CPUs are flooding the gates. But there's one thing some reviewers are either not talking about, glancing over, or flat out misunderstanding altogether. And that's the modes introduced with Threadripper, coined Gaming Mode, and the default Creator Mode. I want to address it so everyone understands how it works and why it's here. First off, it's not some magic mode that takes all the cores of Threadripper and somehow combines them into eight epic cores for ultra gaming. No. Basically, AMD wanted Threadripper to be great at both gaming and more productivity type workloads, but it's certainly still made primarily for productivity. There were two issues AMD found when testing Ryzen Threadripper in certain games. First was the simple fact that some older games simply couldn't handle the higher core count Threadripper brought to the table. They even stated some would just crash, which is understandable. Even modern games today can rarely utilize anywhere near those cores, and pretty much none can truly scale well. So much older games are bound to not understand what's going on. The second issue is a little bit more complex, but basically, for those who don't know, Threadripper uses two 8-core dies to create the impressive 16-core CPU. Each of these dies actually have their own memory and memory controller. In AMD's default mode, Threadripper uses Uniform Memory Access Mode, which allows all the cores to have access to both memory controllers. This gives it a very high bandwidth, but it adds latency into the mix. Certain games simply don't care for this latency. To combat these two issues, AMD implemented a mode called Gaming Mode. What Gaming Mode does is essentially force Windows to only look at half of the cores, as well as only run off of a single memory controller on the die. That means it turns a 16-core 32-thread 1950X into effectively an 8-core 16-thread 1800X, and gaming mode on the 1920X turns a 12-core CPU into a 6-core 12-thread 1600X. You may be wondering how well it works in actual games. Well, it's confusing, unfortunately. Some games prefer more cores, while others prefer the lower memory latency in the gaming mode. So it's one of those situations where putting it in a gaming mode isn't exactly perfect for every game. But luckily, it doesn't have to be so complicated. The simple truth is that you're only really going to see the difference at 1080p, which most who purchase an $800 or $1,000 CPU probably don't just have a 1080p monitor. Really, if you encounter a game that doesn't work, I'd try and turn game mode on to see if it fixes the issue. Just remember that you certainly shouldn't purchase this CPU for gaming alone. This is far more for professionals who just so happen to game. Lastly, for those wondering, you effectively turn game mode on by selecting the profile in Ryzen Master, or you could possibly get most to work in BIOS, but as of yet, it doesn't seem that there's anything called game mode or creator mode when you do it that way. Either way, it certainly seems AMD is trying really, really hard to make this work great for both gaming and productivity. So while that does it for today, let me know what you think of Threadripper. Are you excited for these new 16 and 12 core CPUs? Let me know in the comments below. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggest a video to the left. Thanks so much for coming, and as always, have a great day.